Welcome back. When we last modified our ERC20 token, we added a mint statement, and it works great. The only problem is anybody who likes can come along and mint. We're going to show how to secure it using Viper's built-in assert function. As always, we begin by running the tests in the unsolved folder to see how we're doing, and spoiler alert, it's not going to be pretty. We've updated the test, test settings last time, which you can see by looking at the tests.diff, and you'll see that especially this minter has failed in a lot of functions. At this point, we have some issues, which is that we are changing our token to require that it come from a token owner. And we are also including some new functions to allow the owner to set a minter, prevent the non-owner from setting a minter, make sure that non-minters cannot mint. Essentially, we're trying to assign some permissions into our contract. We'd like there to be an owner who has the ultimate admin capabilities, and we'd like there to be a minter, which might be a series of rotating contracts that are authorized to mint. So let's dive in. Most of the time, we're not editing this ERC20 token that we produced uh, just from a template, but in this case, we'd like to add just a couple of functions to it. So first off, we recognize that all these state variables are here. We covered state variables in a previous lesson, so this should be very familiar to you. Uh, and the particular state variable that we'd like to add is an owner. So this will be stored at the smart contract level, and there's going to be a specific address which is responsible for owning it. You'll notice like name, symbol, decimals, total supply. Uh, you can declare it to be public, which will create an external getter function that will allow people to read the smart contract owner publicly. And we have nothing to hide, so we will also make the owner public, and we will make the minter a public address. So these can be any address, uh, so you could assign it to a smart contract, you could assign it to an uh, individual wallet. When we initialize the contract, we're going to want to set both these variables. If you don't set them, then they're just going to default to the null value for it, so for addresses, there'll be the zero address. If our owner is defaulted to the zero address, we might never be able to change that uh, because there's no way we could call the smart contract as the zero address. So you'll notice in this initialize statement, this is the contract's constructor function. This is called exactly once when the contract is deployed. Oftentimes these variables are all passed in. So the name, symbol, decimals, and total supply are passed at the time of contract construction and then assigned dynamically. So this is useful so you could, in a stroke, you could create 10 different tokens of 10 different names. We could also pass the owner this way, or we could hard code it. We're going to hard code it using this msg.sender. This msg is this built-in Viper variable that includes a number of properties about who is calling this function. So the sender is the address that's trying to write this function to the blockchain. It can also access things like the value that's being sent. We're going to hard code the owner of the contract and the minter of the contract initially to be the message.sender. So now once it's initialized, the owner can mint as much as they like, but we would like to actually uh, force this into the logic. So we'll head down to the mint function, and we'll notice that there's a two address amount, and from there, anyone can add whatever amount they'd like to total supply into their own balance. So we want to preempt these two statements here, which process the mint, by requiring that the owner, uh, sorry, the minter is the one calling this specific function. So there would be ways you could do this. The sort of classic Pythonic way uh, using long form would be to write if statement, then execute something, otherwise pass or throw a revert statement. Uh, there's also within Python a statement that's been important to, in, imported into Viper called assert. If you call the assert statement, then uh, whatever it follows beyond it is going to be some condition. If the condition evaluates to true, then the, the contract will continue. If the condition evaluates to false, then it's going to trigger a revert statement. Uh, revert you've seen if your contract fails to execute. It's actually very friendly for the user because it reverts early on and doesn't require you to spend the gas for the remaining portion of the contract. So you can actually save users the gas money of the next few lines by keeping your assert statements right at the top. The condition we'd like to be true is that the uh, self.owner, which is how we access the owner state variable, 
or actually in this case, we're going to set it to the minter, should be equal to the message.sender. And as long as the message sender is the same as the minter, then we'll go ahead and allow this function to run. And that is all we need to secure this. You'll notice some assert statements are scattered throughout. Um, if you follow the assert statement with a comma and then a uh, revert reason passed in quotation marks, then this will be surfaced to the user as an error message. It also costs gas to do so. So you want to be very choosy about what kind of error message you choose to bubble up. We're not going to pass an error message for the time being. There's one more thing that we'd like to do, which is we'd like to set the minter so we can dynamically update the contract to whatever contractor person we'd like to have minting capabilities. So we're going to create a new function. We'll tag it as external so we can call it from outside the contract. And we'll call it set minter. This is going to accept a single property, which is the new minter address. And we'll include our doc strings as always. Uh, the purpose of this function is to update the address allowed to mint a token. Uh, dev will be must be called by contract owner. And the param that's being passed is the minter address, which is the address to become new minter. And again, we're going to secure this with an assert statement. We're going to assume that the self dot owner of the contract is the same as the sender. And if that is the case, then we'll update the self dot minter to be equal to the minter address that is passed here. We'll fire up our tests here and hope for some better luck. You'll notice that assert statements are used frequently throughout Viper. Uh, they are by far the best way of preparing and protecting your contract. Uh, Solidity has an equivalent of sorts they like to call function modifiers, uh, but Viper doesn't have modifiers, so you have to include the logic directly within the meat of every particular contract function that you're calling. And you'll notice that the test minter has updated. We've passed. We have successfully secured our contract so that when we assign this to the minter contract, only the minter contract is going to be able to use it. Stay safe, friends.